Hello. For the next few weeks, I'll be here giving you basic sewing instructions so that you'll be able to make a simple wardrobe. In each of the lessons, I will cover a complete process so that you need not feel discouraged or completely lost if you should happen to miss one or two sessions. Not only that, but if you will pick up the printed lesson forms designed for each of our TV presentations, you'll be able to fill in this information. I also think it'll be easier for you if you will sew along with me and complete your dress as I make one for our model. And now, let's start our Sew so Easy series. This is Mrs. Moore, our model. Mrs. Moore is wearing a well-fitted dress, and I'd like to show you why we consider it a well-fitted dress. This is an outline of Mrs. Moore's dress. Now I'd like to show you something. The dotted lines on this overlay represent the crosswise threads of her dress. And as you see, at the hip, at the bust line, and the cap of the sleeve, they should be straight across. The threads down the center front of her dress should be straight with the body. Now let's look at the side seam. This side seam should be straight down from the armpit. If the seam swings to the front, do you notice that the dress sticks out in front? If it swings to the back, the skirt will swing out in the back. It should be straight down. Now let's see how this applies to the dress itself. Mrs. Moore, could we see the fit of your dress now? Surely. Now you'll notice on her dress that the threads across the bust and the hip are straight. And the threads across the cap of the sleeve are straight. Now there's one other thing we need to look for when we're observing the fit of a dress, and those are called fitting wrinkles. Now if I pull this green line down, as it sometimes gets to be, you'll find some very deep wrinkles right here under the bust line. Or if the shoulder doesn't fit properly. Let me pull this up and exaggerate it. Sometimes you'll find fitting wrinkles right up in here. Now those we want to avoid. And of course, a well-fitted dress will also be comfortable. In the So Easy series, I'm going to teach you how to make a dress. And while you're making your dress, I'm going to make one for our model, Mrs. Moore. And of course, the first place we'll all start is with taking measurements. The first thing we need to do is take this belt off. And just hold it. Then we're going to tie a cord around your waist so we can establish your waistline. We'll tie that just snug enough to find the natural waistline. Does that seem comfortable? Just fine. Now, the cord should find the natural waistline, and if you want to check it, if you bend over to the side, your body has a natural crease right at your waistline. We can check both sides. Uh -huh. Thank goodness you have only one crease. You know, once I found a lady with two creases, and then we didn't know what to do. Of course, you're going to want to record all these measurements because you're going to be using them from time to time when you make your dress. For convenience, I've asked my neighbor to come in and record these for us. To take the bust measurement, pass the tape around the figure over the fullest part of the bust. Be sure this tape is straight. And you'll want it just snug enough to stay in place and still loose enough that you can run your fingers in underneath it for ease. Now you may be wondering about my taking this measurement over this dress but it's perfectly all right to take one over a lightweight cotton dress that's smoothly fitted. 
Actually, you're going to find some advantages before we get through with all these measurements. The bust measure is 35. Now for the waist, pass the tape around right over this cord. And this measurement is individual, and it should be just as tight as you like to wear your dresses. Is that about right? Yes. The waist measure is 28. Now for the hip, measure down seven inches and mark that place with a pen. Then repeat it on the other hip, measure down seven inches and mark it with a pen. Pass the tape around the figure over these two pins. Sure, the tape is straight, and that measurement is 39. The measurements we've just taken will be used when you decide on what size pattern you're going to buy. Now we continue to take the measurements that we're going to use when we determine whether or not you'll have to alter your pattern, for we do want that perfect fit. The first measurement we'll take is the shoulder seam. If you have on a dress with a set-in sleeve that fits as well as this one. You can measure from the neckline out to the place where the sleeve sets into the armhole, and that will be your right measurement. If you should have on a cap sleeve, however, you'll have to establish this point by finding the socket bone out here. So put your finger on about where the socket bone should be, and then if you'll raise your arm up and down, you can easily find that spot. Then you'll measure from here up to the neckline. Now there's another thing you might want to consider at this point you take that measurement. That is, if your shoulders are narrow in proportion to your hips, or if they're narrow in proportion to a large muscle out here on your arm. You might want to fudge just a little bit out here so that you'll get a little better figure proportion. I think this one is all right as it is, so we'll measure from the neckline, this high point, out to where the sleeve comes into the armhole and that is four and three-fourths inches. The next measurement will be around the arm. When you put your tape measure around the fullest part of your arm, just drop your arm naturally, and take an easy measure, and that is 11 and three-fourths. And while we're over here, we'll take this underarm seam measurement, and we'll need something that's about an inch wide, so let me get a ruler. Place the ruler high up under the arm, and then measure from the bottom of that ruler down to this cord, and that's six and a fourth. The next measurement will be from the high point at the shoulder down to the cord or the waistline, over the full part of the bust, and that's seventeen. You'll notice that's an easy measurement also. Then sometimes we need this measurement from this high point of the shoulder down to the bust line itself, and that is 12. And one more front measurement. From the underarm seam across the full part of the bust to the underarm seam, and that is 21 inches. Our next measurement is across the back shoulder. We we'll want to get a measurement right about in here, across the shoulder, for our comfort. So we'll measure down four inches, mark the spot with a pin, and then measure from armhole seam across the pin to armhole seam. Now, in order to allow the allow the ease that we need here for comfort, would you pretend that you're taking a dish off of the shelf? and that measures 16. We need one more back measurement from the high point of the neckline down to the waistline or to this cord, and that is an easy measure. The back waist measure is 15. Now our last measurement will be the skirt length. And is this the length of dresses you usually wear? I think so. Now stand up, Mary Lou, 
And when she bends over again, will you notice what happens to that skirt? We can't possibly get the correct length that way. I suggest that at least here, you might use a mirror in taking these measurements. In fact, you might like to look in a mirror all the time. Somebody's taking your measurements. All right, then we'll measure the side seam from the cord to the hem. And that is the left side, and it measures 29 inches. The center measurement from the cord around the waist, the bottom of the skirt, that measures 29. And the right side seam measures 29. Perhaps you're wondering why I'm taking so many measurements of the skirt. But we make the dress completely, and so will you, even to putting in the hem, before you have to put that dress on and be measured. So you'll need all four of these measurements that I'm taking on the skirt. The center back is different. It's 28 and a half. Our model is somewhat unusual in that she has three measurements the same and one that is a half an inch different. But for your first dress, take all four of these measurements. After watching me take these measurements, you shouldn't have any trouble taking them. And you will find that accurate measurements are the key to a well-fitting dress. If you take these measurements and follow the methods I'm going to demonstrate, you will end up with a dress that fits the very first time you try it on. Next time, we'll take one more step toward the goal of a dress that fits. I will help you pick out a pattern type that will suit your figure.